Welcome everyone to our prayer gathering for Tuesday, October 27th. What I'd like to do this evening is walk through with you for a few minutes uh, the formula, if you will, that we've been using over the past number of weeks uh, for our time together. And you know that we have been sending out uh, a PDF file attached to an email giving you a guide to follow along uh, with us in prayer, whether you're able to join us uh, at the church or even from your homes. But I felt this would be beneficial uh, to us tonight just to walk this through. Um, this is one of the guides that Lois has prepared for us, and we so appreciate her time and her efforts in doing this. And if you have the guide uh, for today, you'll note it actually says Tuesday, October 26th. That should be the 27th, but that's okay. In the first comment that Lois makes, she says, let's quiet ourselves enough to listen to the one who created the universe. And I don't know about you, but sometimes to just take a minute and just breathe and relax and sit quietly, and then you want to jump and move on to the next task. But our goal, friends, simply in this prayer time together each week is to quiet our hearts and to listen for God's voice as he speaks to us individually so that we would, as the guide says, listen intentionally to God by turning from our distractions to meet him in scripture and in prayer. And you'll notice as you walk through the guide, there are some key points that we pull out each week and there is a, a, a formula that we've been follow, following. And the first one is reverence, a time of giving God glory, honor, and strength. And as you have seen in recent weeks, we have different passages of scripture to help you focus on that. And I think it would be valuable for us to remember very simply that when we think of the term uh, reverence, sometimes words that are used as synonyms for this term, they are fear and awe. That is not fear to be afraid, but rather to simply be in awe of God and who he is as creator and Lord. As we read in this passage from Psalm 89, who is like you, Lord God Almighty? And maybe you want to take a moment there and just stop and think about that. Reflect on that. When we think of how great, how wonderful our God is, who can compare to him? And so as you walk through each one of these steps, we encourage you, do this at your own pace, in your own speed, in your own time. Perhaps you have a pen uh, and paper handy to write down your own thoughts as the Lord uh, would share with you. And then as you go on in verse 8, it says, You, Lord, are mighty, and your faithfulness surrounds us. And as you and I know, friends, these are just two of the characteristics that we find in God Almighty. He is faithful. And to know that that surrounds you, reflect on that. Think about that. Even in the midst of uh, the chaos and the turmoil that we found ourselves in in the past seven or eight months amid, amidst the COVID pandemic, to know that the faith, faithfulness of God surrounds us. And you'll see other scripture references that Lois has put there for us to, to read through. But I, for the sake of time this evening and just, again, helping you as a guide tonight, I'm just going to move on a little bit quicker, but I, quicker, but I encourage you to, to pause and just take the time to go through each of these at your own pace. Now, the second R we, were, we look at is remembering, a time of remembering who we are in Christ. And again, there is a scripture passage here, this one this week is found from Ephesians chapter 1. And you read there in the first verse, it says, He, that is God, predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ. Maybe you stop there and you think, adoption. What does it mean to be adopted into the family of God through what Jesus has accomplished by dying for you, by dying for me? What does that mean for you? Perhaps you know uh, of a family who has an adopted child and the love that they express for that adopted child. Reflect on that for a moment in the context of what God our Father 
has done for you. And then, of course, go on into the various verses. It says in verse 8 that he lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding. He made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ. Again, friends, just to simply know and sit and understand, maybe even just briefly, the wisdom that God makes available to you and to me as his child. And then again, just moving on, repentance, a time of seeking God's face and asking him to search our hearts, to cleanse us from any offensive ways that could hinder our praying. Again, one of the passages that's listed there, it may be familiar to you, 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And you might wonder as you reflect on that, it says, if we confess our sins, for you today, for me today, what is it that we need to bring before Jesus? What do we need to confess? What do we need to repent of? I would encourage you again, if you have a, a pen or uh, and a paper handy, to maybe write down some thoughts there. Again, as I've said just a few moments ago, walk through these verses at your own pace and time as God would speak to you. Then the next passage in Psalm 139, search me, God. I must confess, and speaking of confessing, friends, when I think of that phrase, search me, if we're searching for something, when we think of this in the context of what God is doing, we're saying we're opening up ourselves on the inside, those deepest, most inner parts of our being, and say, know me, God, know me. Can you and I express that honestly this evening before our Lord? And in doing so, as in the next verse, as it would reflect on in Psalm 62, verse 8, that we would trust in him at all times when we can't understand what the next steps are. Are we willing to trust him enough to say, God, would you search me, know me from the inside out? And then moving on again, friends, down to restoration, a time of personal strengthening, renewing our commitment, praying for ministry strengthening. All of you, Clothe yourselves with humility toward one another. Again, I ask that same question, friends. What does that mean for you? What does that mean for me? To display humility to all of those that are around us. God goes on to say, He opposes the proud but shows favor to the humble. What does it mean to humble oneself? And then moving on through uh, the prayer guide, we come to requests, a time of presenting requests to God, salvation, healing, reconciliation, comfort, rescue from the enemy, spiritual awakening, revival, a great harvest of souls. And then the first verse that's referenced there, Hebrews 11.6, and without faith, it is impossible to please God. Again, pause. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. You and I recognize today and understand that our journey with God, it is a journey of faith. Faith will be tested. Faith will be tried. But as it is tested, as it is tried, it is possible to please God. Because as the verse goes on, it says, anyone who comes to him must believe he exists. Believe. What does that word mean to you in the context of your faith in Jesus Christ? And then moving on down to rejoice. It says, a time of giving thanks and praise to God for his promises, faithfulness, 
goodness, unfailing love, hope, and peace. It's interesting in verse 17 of the passage that's listed there in Matthew 28, it says, when they saw him, they worshipped him. When you think of worship, when you come before God, again, what comes to your mind? Is it that time when we would gather together corporately as a community of faith? Is it that day-to-day -day walk in our daily tasks that you and I do that we worship him, recognizing the gifts and talents that he has given to each one. I note the part in verse 18 where it says, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. I don't know about you friends, but as I reflect on that thought, it again is a wonderful reminder to me of who Jesus is, who Jesus is. God in the flesh. He's not a subordinate, but he is God. And how do we understand that? How do we claim that? When he says all authority has been given to me. And friend, that, that is a wonderful thought today when we think of the fact that Jesus as our mediator, because he paid the price on the cross once and for all, we can go to God the Father through Jesus. Why? Simply because Jesus has all authority. And that truly is something that we can rejoice in. And so this, this evening as we've gathered uh, on this Tuesday, October 27th, again, I realize I have gone through some of these scripture passages quite quickly, and I don't intend for you to do the same, but I simply wanted us to, to come together and walk through the steps of how to do this. But I encourage you, take time to walk this through. You might sit in quiet silence for five minutes. Maybe you'll spend 30 minutes in prayer. Friend, don't be concerned about the time that it takes you, but reflect on on what God is speaking to you in these sacred moments as you pray with him. So may the Lord bless you. May he keep you until we have an opportunity to share together again. God bless.